The following is a presentation of TFNN. Now, 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 TFNN opens the door to the future. Larry Pesamento, systems analyst, is your tour guide into the market futures. Want to see into the future? Well, climb aboard Larry's time machine and come with us. Larry takes your phone calls now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. This is the Futures Hour. Here's your host, Larry Pesamento. Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, this is Larry Pesavento for TFNN, 877-927-6648. Uh, the first chart that I posted into Tiger TV today was a chart from the Hong Kong Financial uh, Paper. Uh, it's about the Dow Jones Industrial Average. That's what those uh, Chinese letters are saying up there. And it's over a daily chart. And what the gentleman is doing, he's showing the relationships of the 34, 55, 13, 21, and 8-day uh, cycle bottoms and how they relate to Fibonacci. If it was this easy all the time, it would be quite simple. However, he did come to the conclusion, and please pay strict attention to what I'm going to say next. He said the best way to trade this was to buy the lows and sell the highs. For the life of me, I don't know why he didn't keep that to himself, but he's let it out, so the secret's out, folks. You buy the lows and sell the highs. So uh, we should be with the program shortly. Okay, we need to talk a little bit. Uh, well, we need to talk a lot about what's happening in the grain markets because we're at a really, really, really critical level. I, I know, um, you know, all of you know that we've had a drought. We've been talking about this since May when we hit that 61% retracement in corn down at the $5 level, and now, you know, we're 60% uh, higher up at $8. But we're starting to form uh, patterns that are very bearish in the grains. I know it's hard to believe, uh, but it, it, that is what is happening right now. They might not last very long, but this is what's happening. Uh, we have a three-drive pattern happening in the corn at the 1.618 expansion up here at the $8.50 per bushel area. And we're going to go through the others, too, to show you, you know, what we're looking at. Uh, I did want to make a little comment here about uh, the news and stuff because uh, uh, there's a lot of news out on gold uh, today. Uh, the fact that uh, China is uh, going to buy 5,000 metric tons of gold. And um, believe me, isn't it nice that China has come out and told us that they're going to buy 5,000 tons of metric gold? I would have thought maybe China would have bought the gold first and then told everybody that they bought it, much like what Warren Buffett does. So just because you hear that in the news, you know, don't, don't necessarily listen to it. That happens to be twice a, a year's production. Uh, that they're trying to buy. Gold is strong, folks. We've been bullish this for a long time. It's going higher. Uh, what you want to watch for now over the next couple of days uh, or a week or two is if we get a nice A, B equals C, D pullback coming off these bottoms, um, I'll be covering those in the newsletter and uh, we'll be watching for those both in gold and silver. There's going to be strong support in silver, I believe, at $29 an ounce and gold at around the um, $625 to $630 per, $1625 to $1630 per ounce uh, is what I'm looking at. Now, I wanted to talk a little bit about the news, uh, not just in, in what happened with the the uh, gold in China, whatever, you know, that happens to be, and frankly, I don't believe any of that stuff, but uh, there have been several times over the, my career that the news has been uh, very uh, instrumental uh, in my life. Uh, the first was 1975 when I was uh, along a whole bunch of soybeans and um, the, the Reuters pr uh, program and the USDA and everybody else, uh, this was long before Bloomberg, uh, Knight Ritter was uh, one of the major com commodity people in 1975 said the only soybeans that would be available were, were the soybeans that were in the Smithsonian Institute. That's how, that's how all the crop had dissipated and it was basically the Russian grain robbery. They were buying everything in sight. That was the high day, folks. It never got any higher than that. It went down for two more years in 1980. Gold in October 1980, uh, we had uh, Iranian uh, warships hitting Iraq when the nuclear power uh, stations were being uh, exposed and war, nuclear war was being 
uh, broken out in the uh, Middle East, and the gold was up two dollars on the opening, and then it dropped for uh, three hundred dollars after that. Nineteen ninety one, the Iraqi War, crude was forty four dollars. Um, you know, there was not going to be any more oil because uh, all the oil was going to be, you know, either in nuclear uh, storage stations or uh, there was no, it was going to be held by the Saudis. Uh, that day, uh, oil dropped $11 per barrel when the war only lasted, you know, 12 hours. In 2000, when the NASDAQ hit uh, five, almost 5,000, it got to 49.95. Uh, on the headlines of Business Week, Time, and U.S. News and World Report, within one week, they all had a picture of a big bull with NASDAQ 5000 on it, and that was the high before it dropped 85%. So just because you see this stuff in the news, you know, use some common sense. You know, don't go, you know, getting yourself trapped into the, to the news of things that are going on, and, you know, it's very, very difficult uh, to do that. We all know that the greatest stock in the world is Apple. There's no question about that. It's the most valuable stock in the world. Uh, you know, we've went up and we made a butterfly up there at that 675 level. Whether that's going to be a top or not, I don't know. All I'm just saying is the pattern is there. Uh, I would be, uh, you know, extremely careful uh, at this particular time. So the first one we looked at was gold. I put that into the uh, Tiger uh, TV. The next one we want to look at is uh, we should take a look at the uh, wheat market. Because we have been uh, following it very, very closely. It's been making some beautiful A, B equals C, D patterns, you know, all along the way. And, uh, you know, now what has happened is we've completed an A, B, C, D pattern down at that 636 level that we talked about on last week's show. We were up for six days in a row. We went to the exact 61% retracement of the whole move at 905 and now we've started to come down now if you look at this chart you'll see that we now have two lower highs now the two lower highs are not just necessarily important but realize that they are coming in the face of the most bullish news we've had since 1953 in the greens the only time it was more bullish was in the uh, the dust bowls of the 1930s so this is the most bullish news we've ever had in corn wheat beans any of these things and all the news is incredibly bullish and now we have three lower highs in the wheat market which is you know not the largest market because corn is the largest but you know wheat is certainly you know right up there so uh, after we do that one we need to took, uh, take a look at uh, what is happening in the soybean market and this is one that I think is going to be uh, you know very uh, in instrumental in in looking at how these patterns are working because we've had a, a big d discrepancy if i can get the right shot ah there we go we're going to be okay here there we go i'll just move this up a little bit and uh god willing i'll be able to uh put it up without too much trouble and we'll see the uh this is november soybeans which are the new crop soybeans these these beans will not be harvested until um, uh, late September, early October, and early uh, November. And if you'll, if you'll notice that we're making a big butterfly pattern uh, in the November beans on the daily ba basis, and this was an all-time high in November beans at 17.44 per bushel. Uh, they're now down about 30 cents a bushel from that level. I hit that last night. And so th this is another pattern that has formed uh, that is telling us that there's a potential for, you know, a major, uh, you know, uh, correction in this uh, particular market. If not, you know, the highest high that we've had, you know, for uh, a great, great deal of time. Now, you know, we realize that corn is the largest, um, you know, growing crop that we have here uh, in the United States. However, we do have... Um, you know, we, we don't eat, we eat a lot of rice here, of course, uh, in the United States, but not nearly as much as the rest of the world. The rest of the world is the leader in, you know, what is happening in the, in the, in the rice market. If we ever had a drought that would affect the rice market, like what happened to, the, to our soybean market, we would be looking at something that would be akin to uh, Armageddon, in my opinion. But we have basically just, com just completed a perfect uh, A, B equals C, D pattern in the, in the rice futures. It went right up to sixteen dollars, and we had a big break. We had a rally back to the seven eight six, and now we're we're moving back down again. So this basically tells us that even though we're having bad crops here in the United States, the rest of the world, which eats more rice than all than than what we do by by, by a factor of about ten, 
uh, is still okay. I mean, if rice were going to the moon and we were up around $20 a ton in rice uh, or $20 a bushel in rice, then I would say, oh, well, now we've got a, you know, a chance for, you know, so we better start storing food. And uh, so we'll, we'll just uh, we'll let history decide. But right now, uh, these markets are telling us you don't want to be long up in here. Uh, you know, it, it really has a... Uh, a really uh, strong probability of going down. And the only reason I'm saying that, folks, is because the news is so bullish in corn, wheat, and beans that it is really hard to be bearish. And yet the patterns that we're looking at are telling us that, you know, they're, they're not nearly uh, as strong as they'd be looking at. Just look at wheat. We've had lower highs the last few weeks. It's been following pretty nice. Uh, <laughs> we've been following pretty nicely all along. I've just received a, a flash report that there's one member of my household that loves rice more than she loves wheat. So uh, remember, just don't let it get down too far or she'll be a heavy buyer uh, once the support line is reached. Okay. Um, now, after we look at the at the price of uh, these four, the four major grains that we're looking at, uh, we want to take a look at uh, you know part of the of the soybean complex itself, and uh, the soybeans when you crush the bean, it becomes um, oil and meal. Uh, the bulk of it will be 75% of it will be the uh, one point, uh, excuse me, 75% of the bean will be meal, and the other 25% will be oil, and then there's some residual uh, that they use to feed hogs and other stuff, but uh, that's what we're looking at. So what we're going to do now is we're going to look at the long-term, going back to 2008, uh, soybean meal chart on a weekly basis. And if you put that up, you'll see that uh, this past week we hit the 1.618 expansion to the exact uh, dollar per ton at $543 per ton. And uh, I don't know if that's going to hold it or not, but when you look at the butterfly pattern that we've had in November beans and the fact that the meal has hit the 1.618 expansion, corn has hit the 1.618 expansion, wheat has lower tops, you know, uh, rice is still in a downtrend, it looks to me like the drought effect is probably going to be over shortly if it's not all over already. I, I'm not issuing a, a major sell signal for anyone. I mean, you know, we're basically short some of this stuff on a, on a very small scale, but uh, I really believe that it's got a chance to go lower. You could come in any Monday morning or any morning, and this stuff could be, you know, a whole lot higher just because of some real, uh, you know, unreal news item or whatever, you know. So there's always risk involved with these, but with, with risk comes opportunity. So we want to be following these um, things over the next few months because they will affect us uh, under any under any circumstances. We're going to be affected because of the next chart that I'm going to bring up, and we'll talk about it. Uh, I'm going to bring the chart up and mention it briefly, and then after we have our first break, I'll give a little bit more of a um, uh, of a of a talk on it. And that's our, um, our 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 price of our beef, and that's going to be the cattle market. And uh, what's happening? Um, I was actually trying to get Rich Anderson from Anderson Capital Management uh, on the show today, but he was tied up. He wasn't able to. Uh, you know, to be on the show, he was traveling. So uh, we've got to take a break. I'll be back, 877-927-6648. In just December of last year, the price of gold was down over 10%. In today's highly volatile gold market, you need someone in your corner that understands the complex relationships that exist within the price of gold, as well as within a variety of gold equities. Whether it's the South African gold miners and knowing how the RAND dollar relationship will affect their bottom line, or understanding how John Paulson's $5 billion trade in the GLD can move the market, Tom O'Brien gives you the direction you need to become a 
a better trader each week in his newsletter, The Gold Report. With over 20 individual equities covered and almost another 20 on the potential watch list each week, in addition to covering the XAU, HUI, GLD, and dollar, The Gold Report is a great source for any trader that is looking to be diversified in today's volatile gold market. For your 30-day free trial to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report, log on to TFNN.com today. Don't miss out on this great offer. Act now. You've always taken the long view when it comes to investing, but what if there's an opportunity right under your nose? What if you could be more responsive to market trends to seek to boost your portfolio performance right now while seeking to reduce your overall risk? At Direction Funds, we connect investors with alternative strategies that seek to maximize their returns. Smart investors deserve smart alternatives. Find yours at directionfunds.com. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of Direction Funds carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Funds. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact the Direction Funds at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. Investing in index funds may be more volatile than investing in broadly diversified funds. Distributed by Rafferty Capital Markets, LLC. Millionaires are made every day. The fact is, living your dreams is possible. Someone, somewhere is going to get rich. My recommendation is, let that be you. Each day, someone is making the decision to better themselves and creating a plan to fulfill their financial dreams. Let that be you. The key to turning dreams into reality is to take massive action. Let that be you. I'm Steve Rhodes, co-host of The Money Master Show with Tom O'Brien, seen daily at TFNN. And I can help you with your journey to great wealth. I'll show you how to create the ultimate financial edge, a set of tools, insights, and strategies that are part of my daily newsletter service, Mastering Probability. You'll have direct access to me by phone, email, and my private library of trading and investing secrets for 30 days with an unconditional money-back guarantee. I'll take your trading to the next level. Click on my name, Steve Rhodes, on the homepage of TFNN.com and turn your dreams into reality. Mastering Probability, folks. Let that be you. Kate Stalter's exciting newsletter, Low Price Leaders, has just launched and now is a great time to get a two-week free trial. Every Wednesday afternoon, Kate sends out her weekly newsletter to her subscribers where she focuses on small cap stocks with market caps under $2 billion, as well as low-priced equities with share prices ranging from $5 to $12. Kate tracks a variety of stocks with a combination of strong technical support and solid fundamentals. Many of the stocks featured will be recent IPOs. These newer issues are often some of the biggest price gainers in the market and provide an excellent opportunity for substantial gains if timed correctly. You can catch Kate Stalter live on Tiger TV with her small cap roundup every Tuesday and Thursday at 11 a.m. Eastern Time and visit TFNN.com right now to get your two-week free trial to her brand new newsletter, Low Priced Leaders, while locking in the low introductory monthly rate of only $37.50 per month, almost a 50% discount. Act now. This segment is brought to you by Great Panther Silver. For more information, just click the Great Panther Silver banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Now, back to the Futures Hour. Okay, we're we're back, folks, and we have a caller from Philadelphia. Are you there, John? Good morning, Larry. Good morning. How are you? Good, thank you. Say, Larry, I uh, I wanted to ask you about one thing, but you were just speaking to your audience about uh, cattle, so perhaps uh, I might not interfere with that. And you first uh, go through what your thoughts were there. Oh, all I'm just, you know, we're having higher bottoms now. We're getting ready to come down to a 61% retracement down at that 117 per pound level. And that's an area where people want to be looking to look at it. Because long term, uh, going out uh, another, you know, 18 months or so, we're going to be looking at some really serious prices in meat. Because, you know, the farmers are not able to feed their, their herds because it takes 55 bushels of grain to make a pound of beef. And so uh, they're slaughtering their herds, and that means the little babies are not coming around like they should. So the herd's going to be very, very small. 
And then when you start to need meat, they're going to, and the prices go higher, they start to build their herds, and that makes even less meat available. So uh, this is what we're going to be faced with down the road in about 18 months. So we want to try to take advantage of it ahead of it. That's why they call it futures markets. So we'll sure, keep an eye on sure. it. Thanks. Thanks on that, Larry. I'll also just... I just posted on the Tiger's Den for anybody who wanted to see. Um, uh, to your point exactly about uh, uh, the future price of cattle and beef being higher, uh, the futures contract of cattle for April 2013 delivery, uh, that price of that contract right here, right now, is at uh, 135. So the futures market is already reflecting exactly what you're pointing to, namely 119 now and 135. Wow. Come I hadn't even I hadn't even looked at that, John. Uh, you know, someone brought it to my attention, but I hadn't looked at the contract. You know, going out a whole year. But you're right; that's exactly what's happening. <laughs> yeah, no, it just demonstrates the point you're making. So uh, I just wanted to share that. Um, uh, with that, Larry, I wanted to ask you about the bond market. Um, bonds made that low this week, down near 145, and bounced nicely. Can you uh, share with us the uh, hourly chart and what sorts of things you're looking at uh, for uh, evidence of failures, of short sale opportunities, of anything else? All I'm looking for, John, is a 61% retracement coming down from the July highs. That comes in at the 150 level, and uh, I'd like to see it take. The, I'd like to see it take a whole week to get there. The faster it gets there, the less, uh, uh, you know, uh, what uh, the less. Uh, can't think of the word, but the less uh, I have of thinking it's going to work. You know, so if it gets there in about five or six days, I would really like it. But we're halfway there. We are halfway there in three days. So that tells me we're probably going to be there by uh, Friday, by Wednesday of next week, or even sooner. And if we get right. sharply, if we get sharply above it, we could take out those old highs at that 153 uh, level and go up and make a huge, you know, three drive. Uh, five point reverse point wave up in that 156 157 level and we might even hit that ominous 160 level that uh <laughs> that Tom is uh, looking at because we've held up really well and and the, you know even with the the market uh, uh you know getting any kind of news the bonds have rallied so they're oversold for, for you know we're down three weeks so we're just correcting an oversold market right now but if we don't get any higher than where we are right now then you know rates are going to go lower but we get below 144 they're going to turn the lights out on that bond market it's going to have some real problems below that uh, uh, you know uh, i can i uh, i understand your method in and really focusing in if you get up to a uh, up to that 150 level namely that uh, 60 uh 61 percent retracement sort of zone is there any other set of conditions you might be looking at other than that to uh, institute shorts at all or no? No. I just, gotcha. uh, you know, I keep it as simple as possible, John. I wait for the ratios first, then the patterns, and then there if I have go. some timing things, then I'll look at it. But, you know, that's really what I'm looking at is to see if it can get to that. It's only two points away, well, less than two points away, so they could be there tomorrow or sure. today. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Terrific, Larry. Thanks so much for your thoughts. Okay, Appreciate thanks. your help. Okay, thanks a lot, John, and all the best to you. Uh, we've got another caller from uh, Jim in Gainesville, Florida. Are you there, Jim? Yes, I am. I was wondering if you would look at the euro and, uh, on your charts, how much farther you think it will run to the upside, and the dollar, how much farther it will run to the downside. Okay, I posted uh, earlier in the morning, I posted the, oh, let's take a little break. Jim, stay with me, and we'll, we'll put these up later. Okay, hold on one second. We've got to pay some bills. We've got to pay some bills here. <laughs> okay.
Tom O'Brien's daily trading newsletter, Market Insights, has delivered powerful results for subscribers, and now is the perfect time to try it out for two weeks absolutely free. We're so confident in the value Tom provides his subscribers in his daily newsletter that through Labor Day weekend only, when you sign up for a two-week free trial to Market Insights, we'll send you a free copy of Tom's best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, completely free of charge. We'll even cover the shipping cost. Cancel at any time during your two-week free free trial to Market Insights and pay nothing and keep Tom's free book as a gift from us. This offer is only valid for new subscribers. We've only extended this offer once before and it will only be active for a short period of two weeks. So act now to take advantage of this great offer and be ready to capitalize on a more active, more volatile market once traders return from their August vacations. All the details are on the front page of TFNN.com. Sign up for your free trial to get your free copy of Tom's best-selling book today. In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full customization capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Recently, Basil Chapman has had some outstanding trades in his newsletter, The Opening Call. Each morning by 9 a.m., Basil uploads his newsletter to the TFNN servers so that his subscribers can access his expert trading advice. Basil gives his take on the direction of key indices and updates any active trades that his subscribers are currently in. Just recently, Basil's subscribers closed out a short position in Chipotle Mexican Grill, CMG, for more than an $86 profit per share, over a 20% gain in just one position. If you'd like to check out Basil Chapman's newsletter, The Opening Call, then visit the front page of TFNN.com and click Trading Newsletters. There you'll find Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, where you can request a free sample copy. Also, don't miss Basil's program, The Tiger Technician's Hour, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, 11 a.m. Eastern on TFNN. In just December of last year, the price of gold was down over 10%. In today's highly volatile gold market, you need someone in your corner that understands the complex relationships that exist within the price of gold, as well as within a variety of gold equities. Whether it's the South African gold miners and knowing how the RAND dollar relationship will affect their bottom line, or understanding how John Paulson's $5 billion trade in the GLD can move the market, Tom O'Brien gives you the direction you need to become a a better trader each week in his newsletter, The Gold Report. With over 20 individual equities covered and almost another 20 on the potential watch list each week, in addition to covering the XAU, HUI, GLD, and Dollar, The Gold Report is a great source for any trader that is looking to be diversified in today's volatile gold market. For your 30-day free trial to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report, log on to TFNN.com today. Don't miss out on this great offer. Act now. This segment is brought to you by Crocodile Gold. For more information, just click the Crocodile Gold banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Now, back to the Futures Hour. Okay, we're back with Jim in Florida. Jim, are you still there? Yes, I am. Okay, let's cover the euro first because, uh, you know, I mentioned in last week that we should have some resistance at 125. That held for about a day and a half. Uh, it didn't back off very much, about 50 pips from that level. And now we're, we're almost at the 786, which comes in just about at 126. Yes. And that will be a, that would be a second bearish Gartley uh, coming off the highs that we made back in July. But if we get above 126, that's going to be a pretty much of a, 
uh, a game changer because that means that that bottom that that came in around that 120 level, you know, could be something of more significance than people give it credit. But right now, the market is acting like it's just about experiencing its last gasp up here. And if we switch over to the U.S. dollar index and take a look at that. It's trading at 81.30, and the 61% retracement on that comes in at the uh, 81 level. So we're only 30 cents away. So if you realize that the dollar index is so much uh, related to the euro, all the euro has to do is move up about 30 points or so, and the U.S. dollar index to come down, and then you would be right at the uh, spot that you're that you'd be looking at. In in addition to that, um, it, do you have a second? And I, I'll cover one other thing that I that I think is rather important, and that is, you know, we we have about four major you know currencies. We've got the euro, the dollar, the pound, you know, and the yen. And we all know that the yen is is making a, a retracement, uh, which is is hurting the dollar uh, a little bit also. But another one, you know, is the British pound. And the British pound is completing some really amazing um, uh, patterns up here at this 159 level. We're trading at 158, you know, 78 uh, right now, but it has completed some, you know, really amazing ones. I've got to make a little adjustment here because it's got so much on it that I, I want everybody to. Um, Oh dear, I'm going to mess it up. <laughs> I'm trying to do with this one-handed, you know, and it's just not working. But as we talk, I'll just show the chart uh, anyway. It won't have everything in it the way that I want. It's close enough. You can see all the patterns there. They're pretty easy to see, and uh, you know that's the main thing that uh, that we want to be able to look at. But you'll see the time relationships that are there. And we have a 61% retracement in the British pound. Uh, we have an ABCD. We have a Gartley. Uh, it's just got everything there, much like what the VIX index had, uh, you know, last week. It was, you know, completing all of these patterns. So this is telling us that the British pound is near its last, uh, you know, part of a, of a rally that started back on June 4th. So it's been rallying about uh, 10 weeks, and so we're ready to, uh, you know, looks like it's getting ready to uh, turn the cycle down. And that, that would bring the uh, U.S. dollar index, you know, starting to rally again. Okay. What would be the short position on the uh, British pound? Uh, I would I would be selling it around the 159.20 uh, level. Uh, it's at 158.78 now. Anything above 159, I think, is probably okay. And then I would risk about uh, 70 pips, which is about $400. That's all I would be risking on that particular trade. What's the symbol for the British pound, the short British pound? Uh, GB. Uh, now that the GB is the um, is the symbol for the uh, the the forex GBP, but with the uh, florex uh, itself, the the symbol will will vary on who which forex bank you're working with, but most of them use BP, you know, British pound. Okay. You, know, you well, have to time. double check with your provider on that, and I'm sure they have an ETF for a British pound. But you know, you got to be really careful with those because they're very thin, and as long as you're not doing you know, uh, too much, you know, you'll you'll be okay. But if you start doing a large quantity, you'll get, you'll get into a larger uh, problem with liquidity. Okay. Well, listen, I thank you so much. Okay, thanks for calling in, Jim. Have a nice day. It. You bet. And I hope the hurricane doesn't get to you because I've been keeping an eye on that for you folks down in Florida, but evidently it's starting to move out a little bit, so I hope that's what's uh, – what's going to happen. I remember Hurricane Andrew and Hurricane Carla in 1960 because my sister is named Carla and that was one really devastating uh, earthquake back in 1960. But Andrew, I think, was the worst um, other than Katrina, of course, which you know, just destroyed uh, New Orleans. Okay, we, uh, we've gone through the, the U.S. dollar, uh, we've gone through the, the bond market, we've gone through the grain markets, uh, and uh, we've gone through the precious metal markets as far as the um, uh, gold is concerned, but we need to take a, a look at the silver market because uh, we have some information I think that's useful to everybody. You know, we've been following you know, the open interest in the gold and the silver for uh, quite some time. And uh, we, we finally got yesterday a really good increase in, in volume in gold, and we got a really nice pop of about 4% in open interest. And so that's telling us that new buyers have came in. And, of course, these dudes were re rewarded today, you know, with gold being up, uh, you know, 30-some dollars. So uh, the, the bulls are in their bulls are in control right now. The thing that we must watch in the gold market is the 1690 level, which is the 61% retracement coming off the highs. That's 
a down sloping uh, trend line that's there. Each time it's hit that trend line, it hit a Fibonacci number exactly. And if it hits 1690 and doesn't go anywhere, you know, you've got to be very, very careful at that point because, uh, you know, it could still be in the downtrend and this could just be, you know, a short covering rally. The rally in silver. Uh, you know, we came out of that long consolidation that we've been talking about because we had those higher bottoms, uh, you know, day after day after day, the, the market kept making higher bottoms, which, you know, if you trade with the trend, that's how you define a trend. If you have higher bottoms, you're in an uptrend. If you have lower tops, you're in a downtrend. And now we've exploded to the upside, you know, in the uh, in the silver market. We've taken out the highs from June, and now we're, we're approaching uh, the 61% retracement of this is up around 33 you know, dollars per ounce. So we still have a long way to go. The thing to watch, folks, is if you're trading this, is to uh, to watch for an ABCD correction. It might last just a day or two, uh, maybe three, uh, where the market, you know, has some pretty good volatility and makes an ABCD thunderbolt pattern, you know, to the downside. It usually will stop, you know, at the 382 level, and that's what you would be uh, looking at as far as, uh, you know, the support. And that support now comes in, at twenty nine dollars an ounce uh, in the silver, and uh, you know it's it's important to watch that in the gold. That support will come in around sixteen uh, thirty per ounce. So these are the ones that uh, you want to watch for retracements because this is how you know the market will give you a chance to get in if you miss the first part of these of these higher bottoms. You know along the way, uh, you know part of the reason why the the gold and silver you know looks so bullish at the time is the fact that. You know, while the rest of the, you know, the stock market was, uh, you know, having a tremendous, uh, you know, rally, we were making these gold stocks and silver stocks were making, you know, tremendous uh, uh, moves to the downside. And we were making a, uh, uh, a, a bullish uh, butterfly pattern right at the bottom uh, in July. And ever since that time, you know, that's when those higher bottoms really took an effect in the gold mining stocks. And they have since, you know, you know paid off handsomely. And, you know, it's up over, you know, 15% in just a matter of, uh, you know, in 30 days, which is uh, better than you get at the Wells Fargo Bank if you put your money in at 0.25% for a year. Of course, the risk of being in gold stocks is a hell of a lot more than, uh oh, I said the H word, is a lot is a lot worse than, uh, you know, uh, than uh, the risk is a lot more in gold stocks than it is in holding your, your uh, money in Wells Fargo. At least that's what we think. You never know. Some morning you could come in, and maybe the guy that runs uh, Wells Fargo took off and took his money to Paraguay or Uruguay. But we uh, that shouldn't happen because it's protected by the SPIC and, of course, our wonderful policemen, uh, the SEC and the CFTC. And I hopefully they'll start doing their jobs a little better than they have been doing in the past, and we'll get to be moving. We've got one other market in the commodity markets. Uh, actually, there's two that are at uh, major points that we're looking at. And, and that is our crude oil. Uh, you know, we hit that number that we were looking at at 90, um, 97 and change uh, for the uh, for the crude oil, and we have uh, we backed off a little bit uh, from the from the level. It hit it uh, just about perfectly yesterday. It went above it by about 20 cents, and now it is uh, you know starting to move down. It's about 60 cents off of the 61 percent retracement. So these are all all of these things in in the commodity markets that we're looking at. Are coming uh, to pass. You know, we looked at the we looked at soybeans. We have a butterfly top in soybeans. We have a three drive top in corn. We have three lower tops in the wheat market. We have lower tops uh, in the rice market. Um, you know, cattle are heading down because they're liquidating the herd. We're now making 61 percent retracements in the. Um, uh, crude oil and so uh, and and gold is is really close to the sixty one percent it 's only sixteen dollars away at uh, sixteen ninety so if gold gets to sixteen ninety and doesn 't go much higher than that, you know maybe these commodities will will start to move down but you know th this is what history is going to tell us over the next uh, few weeks or days, whatever it happens but right now we 've got a lot of things going, and they all could fail. I mean, you know, the, the beans could just explode and the wheat could explode to the upside and so could corn and, you know, all this would be wrong. But the patterns right now are telling us to be incre incredibly careful, you know, if you're long these markets because uh, it, it, they've had a tremendous run, Not nothing like we've seen before. It has been uh, many, many years since we've had this large of a move 
uh, in these grains. And that tells us that, you know, there's a lot of demand out there. But remember that price will, will ration demand, and that's, that's what happens. If prices get high enough, people just won't use it. They'll use something else. They'll switch to something like rice. Well, rice is not telling us that's what's happening because, you know, rice is still have, has lower tops, so it's not participating. And it's a far, far larger crop than, you know, our, our corn crop, which is, uh, you know, about 10 or 12 billion bushels. Uh, you know, it's still a whole lot. Remember, it takes 55 bushels of grain to convert into a pound of meat. And so, you know, if the price of corn gets too high, we'll all be vegetarians and we won't be eating a lot of meat. Uh, and so th- this is also a possibility. But um, the, the drought that we've had has affected us all a great deal, and it has continued to affect us. And But now the, the patterns for the first time, uh, in in a long time uh, have have started to tell us and what's so, what's so interesting folks is that the corn hit the exact 1.618 on the weekly chart soybeans hit the 1.618 on the weekly chart wheat hit the 2.618 on the weekly chart soybean meal hit the 2.618 uh, on the uh, on the weekly chart so all of those are you know these are these are very powerful geometric and and sacred numbers from the Fibonacci summation series, and so you you really need to to respect that uh, in my opinion because we're at that spot you know where we're uh, very vulnerable because the, you know basically the crops are not going to do much from here because the corn crop is pretty much uh, you know, not decimated but you know badly hurt. Uh, soybeans are still hurt, but we could get a little rain up there, maybe from one of these hurricanes, and the, the crop could come back, you know, pretty good uh, in that. And wheat, of course, we have several different crops of wheat that will be coming in, you know, through the rest of the um, the rest of the time. Now, I've got uh, just a few a uh, few more minutes left in the in the program, and I, I wanted to talk a little bit uh, about where we are in the stock market because we've had uh, so much of these divergences, you know, that are happening in the stock market are also, um, you know, uh, are occurring that I think are, that are pretty important. Uh, the main thing that we talked about, one of the major, you know, patterns that, it, that is completing right now in the stock market this week uh, was the VIX index. You know, we had an AB equals CD pattern uh, forming. The cycles between March and June and June to August were absolutely perfect, almost to the exact day. Uh, and now it's uh, we've had a nice explosive move up here. Even when the market had a rally, the VIX continued to rally, and so that's another sign that the market uh, looks like it wants to go uh, a little, uh, quite a, quite a bit higher, I think. And I believe on Basil's show yesterday, he, he was talking about a minimum of 20 in the VIX index, and and I'm, frankly, I think you could probably double that and not be too far off if this thing does turn like we think it's going to. We've also had um, the divergence that we've we've seen in the uh, the euro stock market. The fact that it could not, you know, go above the, the above the seven eight six retracement, uh, along with the the same thing happened with the um, head and shoulder pattern that we had in the New York Stock Exchange index. And we've got another caller here from uh, Mike in California. Are you there, Mike? Yeah, I'm here. Good morning. Good morning. What can I do for you? Yeah, hopefully you can educate me a little bit. Uh, and you've been I've been. Very interested in your discussion about, um, you know, meat prices, et cetera, et cetera. When you're talking about meat, you're using it as a generic term. Is there a way you can help me out at, um, as the beef cattle? I understand why they're going to send them to slaughter to save on the cost of feeding them. What will that that should make the price of corn come down? Some because there'll be less demand. What will that do as far as chickens? I don't know if chickens are more efficient the in chickens. converting um, corn to meat. Uh, then chickens, beef is. Um, maybe you can help me a little bit. The chickens feed on a, a combination of meal and corn with a heavy concentration of meal because it's almost pure protein. You know, the soybean meal, once they crush it, and so that's what they do for... Uh, for chickens. They used to feed many years ago, you don't remember this, but I certainly do, they used to feed fish meal from the anchovies to chickens because it was cheaper than soybean meal and we didn't have large soybean crops, but the chicken would give a, a fishy taste and that didn't sell very well, so they had to fry it. And this is one of the reasons why uh, Colonel Sanders put so many spices into his uh, stuff is to mask the the taste of the of the fish. People don't talk about that, but that's what that's what happened back in the 50s when uh, Arlen, uh, Colonel Sanders Sanders, uh, you know, came up with that recipe. So uh, chickens are really more uh, related to soybean meal than they are corn. Oh, okay. So stay with we, me, Mike. We got to take a break. We just come back. We'll talk fine. a little no, bit more fine. about Go this. Ahead. I yeah, stay with me. Okay.
If you're an investor looking for a great weekly investment newsletter, then now is the perfect time to try out Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks. Every Tuesday, Ken breaks down multiple sectors in his weekly newsletter, Ultimate Growth Stocks, with a full in-depth report including specific trading recommendations within his model portfolio, charts, sector analysis, upcoming economic data, along with intraweek trading updates on newsletter positions whenever the market dictates. Right now, you can receive a full month, that's 30 days, to evaluate Ken's newsletter free of charge to see if it fits your trading plan. At less than $75 per month, Ken provides you with his expert trading advice that can pay for itself in no time. Take advantage of this great offer by signing up for a 30-day free trial to Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks today. Don't let this offer pass you by. Visit the front page of TFNN.com and sign up now. With the launch of Tiger TV, TFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you can gain access to each host's charts and computer screens as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Ken Shreve, Kate Stalter, David White, Larry Pesavento, Victor Jones, or Terrell Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV for your viewing pleasure 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com and see what you're missing. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den, absolutely free, for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Are you looking for a precision edge in the market? Something that can stack the odds in your favor? Then look into Larry Pesavento's new trading newsletter, Patterns, Profits, and Peace of Mind. In each weekly issue, Larry explains what's going to happen in the markets based on the pattern he sees developing and gives you actionable trade ideas based on those patterns. Plus, you'll get his detailed analysis on a variety of markets and sectors, including stocks, treasury bonds, the gold market, oil, the dollar, the forex market, and more. And you'll get the Technical Corner segment, which is a short but powerful weekly training session on trading. You'll get access to all the patterns Larry is seeing in the markets, plus the Astro Harmonics and powerful Bradley stock market model that Larry utilizes for less than $5 a day. An extremely potent combination that will give you just the edge you've been looking for. Try patterns, profits, and peace of mind absolutely free for two weeks. Go to TFNN.com and click on the free trial link at the top of the page. That's an $85 value, yours free when you register right now. Get Larry's patterns, profits, and peace of mind and get the edge you've been looking for. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. Now, back to the Futures Hour. Okay, we're back with uh, Mike in California. Are you still there, Mike? Yeah, I'm still here. Yeah, the reason, your... This has been very helpful. The reason I was calling him, again, about chicken is I'm looking at a stock, for example, like Buffalo Wild Wings. I'm looking to see that stock take a hit because people... We'll assume the chicken's going to soar in price. And it looks to me from what my own analysis says and from what you're saying that I wouldn't expect chicken uh, as opposed to beef to soar in price. 
I don't know the relationship to that, but if you'll just trade the stock itself, that'll give you a really good clue of what's going to happen because, uh, you know, it, it basically comes down to the basic tenet of why we do technical analysis. If there are more buyers, prices are going up. If there's more sellers, prices are going down. And believe me, people on the inside do know things that we don't know, and so if they're selling and in, and in quantity, you know, the price will start to go down. And a perfect example was Green Mountain Grocers. You know, that stock, you know, was decimated, and, you know, insider selling was happening all along. The same thing happened with Enron, of course, and but the, they do have inside information, and they're able to do that because they're, you know, part of the of the company. That's not mean they're doing anything wrong. It's just that they have more information than we do. But in the bar chart, it, 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 they can't hide from you. They can lie to you. They can cheat you, but they can't hide from you. If they're selling, prices will go down. If they're buying, prices will go up. That's the bottom line. Okay, well, thanks very much. You have a you good bet, day. You bet, Mike. You bet. Okay, I'm going to be winding it up here. I'm going to finish up with the divergences that uh, I've been talking about here for for quite a while. Uh, I posted into the Tiger TV the VIX index. I posted in the um, index for the Dow Jones transportation. I posted the utility index, and they all you know are all heading down. It looks uh, you know this market is weak, folks. I mean, we have very low volume, but you know, even though you know, we've had a, a rally. It's gone pretty much nowhere when you look at the New York Stock Exchange Index. And, uh, you know, that's what we'll be uh, wishing for. we got one more caller, and that's our friend from Singapore. William, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Thank what can I do for you, my friend? No, just to say thank you. And okay. I've been following your call, uh, especially your goal recently. And it is really a very good call. Um, and I, I understand that you're going to take your leave and hope that um, you can come back soon. Oh, I, I will. That's not a problem. <laughs> and what, I, wish you, your... uh, I wish you very good health, you know, uh, when you're taking a rest. Okay, thank you. I'll yes. still be I'll Thanks. still be working. I'll just do I'm going to be doing a lot more resting. That's the main thing. But gold does look like we're going to head at least to that 1690 level, which is a very critical level, William. That's the sure. 61% retracement coming down from those lower highs. Uh that's sure. exactly the same pattern that we just had in wheat and of course wheat 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 has already started to back off. So you got to watch 1690 in the uh sure. in the gold. So keep I really do. good uh, uh knowledge of that one. Yes, I will monitor very closely. Thank you very much. Okay, thanks for calling in, William. Thank you. Okay, you bet. Uh, so there's a lot of things happening, folks. Uh, we'll let history decide what's going to occur, but if they, all these things fail, you know that means that the Fed is probably going to come in and print some funny money, and the euro will probably go to, you know, back to 147 or something like that, and the dollar will collapse. But right now, it doesn't look like that. This is a very normal. Uh, trading market, you know, we've had some divergences along the way, and we're having divergences in a lot of different things, uh, you know, and that, that's very, very important. But the, the breakout that we had in gold and silver is definitely for real, and uh, you want to watch this AB equals CD pullback. Uh, if you get the newsletter, I'm certainly going to be watching it with, uh, you know, very, uh, very closely in that because um, I'm really involved in the long side of this uh, gold market. And I think it's got a chance to, because if it gets above 1,700, folks, the move between 1,700 and 2,000 could be very, very fast because we had a heck of a move and we didn't back off it. We only gave up 20, 28% over seven months. I want to wish everybody a happy trading and may God bless.